Next, let's move on to another function, right? So this is something that those of you who have gone through our modeling courses um, you've encountered in the past, which is when we build, specifically in the discounted cash flow analysis, something that we often do when we build the discounted cash flow analysis and arrive at a value of a company is we say, well, what is the implied growth rate of that valuation, right? So, so this formula is something that I always, I always forget how to back into it. I always have to sort of go back and try to sort of get this formula. I always screw up the, the parentheses. Perfect candidate for using Lambda. It's just not something I'm gonna have to think about anymore if I get the formula right. And so um, in this case, you know, we've got the formula, we've identified it for you. And so if a user is given, you know, identified a discount rate in, in the discounted cash flow analysis, we call that the weighted average cost of capital or the WAC. The cash flow is specifically in the applications we use. We quite often call that free cash flow. It's a specific type of cash flow. And then the value of the annuity, we call terminal value. And so if we've got this annuity, we've calculated a value. This is a hard code, right? So the, the, the model spit out a value of a business based on some other assumptions. Uh, the model has assumed the free cash flow in the first period of the annuity to be 75,000. And then the model also assumes a discount rate of 9%. Well, what is the implied growth rate? So if you've got something that's worth $1.2 million and the first period it has a cash flow of 75,000 and it's, you know, the, the riskiness of those cash flows are 9%. Well, what's the implied growth rate year over year of this cash flow to justify a value of the annuity? And so the way we're going to do this is we're simply going to grab that, the implied growth rate is simply 2.9%. If you plug in all these parameters, it says, well, the implied value, this 75,000 just has to grow 2.9% forever, given this discount rate, to justify a value, a lump sum value of that annuity of one point. 1.27 uh, million. Well, let's turn that into a lambda, right? So I'm just going to take this formula and I'm going to say, okay, lambda, I've got the discount rate, right? That's the, let's call that the rate. Let's call this the next argument, the cash flow. And the next argument is going to be value. So those are the three parameters. I'm going to plug in the formula. It's going to help me sort of visualize what I need to do here. C42 is the discount rate, so I can replace that rate. C43 is the cash flow. C44 is the value. All right, let's, let's finish this up. C43, cash flow. C44 is value. So now I'm going to close the parentheses. I'm not going to forget it this time. And then I'm going to check all these parameters. Here's a rate, here's a cash flow, and here is a value. All right, and I'm off to the races. So one thing I should mention, you guys are going, to, I'm going to give you this file. You can download this file and you can see these lambdas yourself. You can practice them on your own. And I'm actually personally just going to keep compiling all these lambdas that I think are going to be useful for me to invoke. Let me grab this lambda. Let's go back here, alt mn underscore n. Let's type in implied g again. And let's go into here, paste this in. And as always, I'm going to identify rate equals discount rate, cash flow. Now I'm using very descriptive names. If you use very non-descriptive names, this becomes all the more important. Cash flow equals first period cash flow. value equals the present value of the annuity. All right, I'm going to click OK, click close. And again, I can now invoke implied G. And I've got my formula, discount rate, value of the annuity, I never have to think about this ever again.